the Everglades is dying of thirst. It should look like this. It has been drained, diked, and its water channelized, so what was once a river of grass has become a series of stagnant lakes. And so consequently, the plants and the animals just don't know how to respond to this new water regime. And the result has been complete environmental collapse. So many of the animals that depend upon the Everglades are disappearing. Wading bird nesting sites have declined dramatically. Snail kites are critically endangered because the marshes where they hunt snails have dried up. And the vanishing Florida panther is the poster child of a dysfunctional Everglades ecosystem. Ten years ago, Florida and the Army Corps of Engineers came up with a $2 billion plan to save what was left of the Everglades, now less than half its original size. Yeah, the problem was it did a lot of things, but it didn't restore the Everglades. There is a new plan, but it will take years and a lot more money. Nothing on such a grand scale has ever been attempted before. We're talking about an immense area here. 1,000 square miles of farmland near Lake Okeechobee was once part of the Everglades. The land was drained to grow sugarcane. At least 135 square miles of it will have to be rehydrated in order to save the Everglades. This area is also would be absolutely perfect for building a reservoir on to store water to give to the Everglades when it's dry. The plan calls for building the world's biggest reservoir on land now owned by the U.S. Sugar Corporation, and then pumping water into treatment areas where plants like cattails would filter out phosphorus and other chemicals. All these are artificial marshes that were constructed to clean up all the polluted water from the sugarcane fields before it gets into the Everglades. The 47,000 acres of wetlands Florida has already built have reduced phosphorus levels by 70 percent, but some experts think that an additional 50,000 acres will be needed to get to an acceptable level. This is what the Everglades looks like when you have too much nutrients coming into it. Wading birds can't get in there to feed, fish can't get in there among the roots to live, and so if we don't do something about the nutrients, this is what the Everglades will look like. Deeper inside the refuge, the water is cleaner and there's more of it. Building what amounts to a giant artificial kidney at the northern end of the Everglades will make recovery possible at the southern end. It is an ambitious plan to help this amazing wetland heal itself from Lake Okeechobee all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. For Assignment Earth, this is Bruce Burkhardt.